Shalom and welcome to another weekly Bible studies. We continue to write and divide the word of truth. Now there again, I'd like to welcome all YouTubers, social media, anybody viewing past, present, or Lord willing, future videos. Of course, today's study is we continue in uh, Luke, the second chapter. I did not get to go all the way down through Simeon's prophecy. Uh, so I hope that we get through there today. There's some more things about Simeon. Uh, that I want that I hadn't showed before in videos uh, years past, but of course Simeon, a devout man, a devout Jew, was at the temple and in the spirit when Mary come in with Joseph and the Savior, uh, baby Jesus, to be uh, offer the sacrifice two turtle does according to the law. But before we get there, we're going to start back, I think it's Luke 2, 9. But I will go to, I'm going to show you a scripture in Isaiah that also relates to this birth, uh, Christ's birth, or her uh, in pains to be birthed here. As we talked about, when Christ was born, also those other firstborn first fruits out in the wilderness through those virgin women, they were also birthed at that time. So she, Mary being in a type, in type, Christ being the firstborn of many brethren, when he was born, they were born. And of course, they were slaughtered by Herod at two years old and under. And then of course, when Christ starts his ministry, grows up and starts his ministry, his whole ministry is about coming for those lost sheep. I did not come, he said, but except for the lost sheep. And that lost means destroyed sheep, which those are slaughtered by Herod. This is all by the counsel of the Father to redeem those under the law, Christ being head over that to start the one new man, the new creation. And that is the mystery, people. So for those who have been viewing the videos, come to understand that. Of course, that's the word, the truth, the gospel. What well, This is the gospel, everything we're talking about here. Not the other gospel, or not the gospel we've been raised with. That's another gospel Paul talked about in Galatians 4th chapter. So, very, very important. Now, before we go to the Lord's Prayer, I would like to say, try to, when we're studying this, I know, as of course, being nearly 2,000 years later, but Try to get your vision back in Jerusalem. This is all. This is, forget about just go back. When we go back to the scriptures, put yourself back there and try to block out. Uh, you know where we're living and what's going on now. Just just put yourself back in the scriptures. In other words. What's happening there has nothing to do at that time with us Gentiles. See, you, you know, in other words, we got to stay in the context of what this is about before the light comes to the Gentiles, people. So, so you've got to put yourself and understand this is all about under uh, the Mosaic Law or the 12 tribes or Jacob and then Christ being born, coming through come into being under a woman that was under the law, the Virgin Mary. And of course, all these first fruits were under the law, and he come to redeem. That means ek, uh, redemption from being under the law. See? So he purchased them by dying on the tree. So you've got to go back there and just leave what you think or how who Jesus is or how you got saved and all that we got to go back and pick that up and get that established order before it gets all mixed in with what we've been taught. See, that's why that's been left out. What we're teaching now, people, has been left out, which was prophesied by the prophets, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Hosea, Ezekiel, all these different prophets, and they kill the prophets. So keep this in mind. Uh, and we'll, when we go there to try to just put everything, focus everything on what's what's actually happening when when Mary is given birth to uh, our Savior. So uh, very important there. If you can contemplate on that, then 
uh, maybe your eyes should be open to see. For those that don't understand, or the new ones that's coming in, you know, this is what this is what we have to understand and see what was going on to fulfill Israel's prophecy that the prophets should prophesy that Christ would fulfill. See, don't we can't jump over here about Jesus yet. I mean, you know, you can't with us Gentiles, okay? So, all right, let's go to the Lord's Prayer. Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, coming to be in on earth as it is in heaven. Now, people, when, we, when we're praying this prayer that Christ told us to pray, that thy kingdom come into existence, that means you know, come into being on earth as it is in heaven. You see, so the, the kingdom that Christ was preaching was the kingdom that would come into being born on earth and then being taken to heaven. But for, for this good news to all men, uh, goodwill to all men, uh, the angels were singing, we'll see in here in Luke 2, uh, and praising God. So when Christ redeemed this kingdom and then went to heaven, then by the promise of the Father to send, the promise of the Holy Spirit to send at Pentecost to birth those that believe and enter the kingdom because the kingdom is in us now. It's not out there. It's a spiritual man birthed to see this kingdom that's in us, which is who he come to get, the first fruits, and him being king over them. That is paramount because now that spirit has birthed us here as first fruits of the spirit to preach the kingdom of God, see, to preach this message, to preach this gospel. This mystery. So, the, so that's that's why we say the Lord's Prayer and how important it is. Now I will go over it and show you some things I hadn't showed you in the Greek. Not today. So thy kingdom come into being 2,000 years ago when Christ redeemed the first fruits of Israel. And that started the new creation, the one new man, uh, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven there. And then he sent the Holy Spirit to birth us to become first fruits of that kingdom of that uh, that Christ come to redeem, which is the heavenly kingdom. And so, and so this has to be preached uh, to the end. And then at the end, the mystery of God will be completed when the two witnesses stand up. So thy kingdom come into being, all the earth is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. This is our spiritual bread that we're, uh, the word. We're eating the word, the bread. That's the spiritual understanding. We're eating, so you, we're eating the book or the verses here and that spiritual understanding so we'll understand. So give us today our, our, uh, our spiritual bread or our daily bread. Forgive us for our debts. We forgive our debtors. And lead us not in testing, but deliver us from wicked one. For thy kingdom is the dunamis power, the resurrection, and the glory of them unto the ages of ages. In Christ's name we pray. Praise our Father, Yah. So, so hopefully you're coming to see how important the, the kingdom prayer is. And so now, so let's go ahead and pick this up. Uh, let's go back to... Uh, Luke, uh, the second chapter, and then we're going to go to Isaiah 26, 17. Make a note of that. Okay, so let's look here in Luke, the second chapter, and what we were talking about, the, the shepherds in the last, the shepherds and the angels, the firstborn, Christ wrapped in the, uh, swaddling clothes, and uh, so we went over all that, but right here uh, in Luke 2, 6, it was while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Uh, and that's talking about the woman which Mary represents uh, heavenly Jerusalem, the woman, the mother of us all. So, uh, and of course, when, when she's delivered in that context, they also, those virgin mothers of those first fruits that were uh, born right after Christ, Christ being the firstborn, 
they also come into band. They also were birthed, and then of course Mary uh, uh, is is uh, the 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 picture there of the scripture being fulfilled. That of course she's in Bethlehem, Judea, and there's not enough room for them in the inn. You understand? Went over that. So, so the so the shepherds are going to find Christ as as a uh, the firstborn son wrapped in swaddling clothes in the manger here. Now you notice where I've got this in yellow delivered here. So now let's go. Let's just pick it up real quick. Let's go back to the prophet here, which we have to understand. Let's go back to the prophet. Uh, We've talked about uh, Jeremiah quite a bit. Let's look at Isaiah. He was in the same time factor Jeremiah was. So let's go to Isaiah, the 26th chapter, and notice what uh, Isaiah has penned here and come down to verse 17. Now, people, for, for those that are, you need to be writing or making notes of this scripture, uh, right here, and I'll go to the apostolic here so we can keep up with the Greek here, but you need to be writing down, so so you can take Luke 2, 6, Luke 2nd chapter, verse 6, and you can coordinate or make a mark or uh, a, a direction point and go by and, and then put uh, Isaiah 26, 17. Right here. So let's read 26, 17. Now, of course, Isaiah's prophesying this. Luke 2, 6 is being fulfilled. See, so let's look and see right here. Isaiah 26, 17. And as a, and it's got uh, in italics, as a woman, and that's re representing, of course, this is Mary, but she represents heavenly Jerusalem, people. Travailing approaches to give birth. Now there's the word. The time's approaching there. The, I mean, this is a uh, prophecy. Now, of course, it won't happen until Luke 2, 6. Uh, but to give birth here is the same word uh, that that is used 50, 88 uh, in Luke 2, 6. It's the same word we find in Revelation 12, 2, 4, 5. Uh, which we went over in the last video. So right here, she's surveying and approaching to give birth, and over her pains, she cries out, uh, uh, so we were to your beloved. Now, you see, the, when it's saying we were, so what is this, I mean, in the English, but in the context, who is Isaiah, a prophet to Israel people? So there again, that's why I'm saying, don't, don't, forget about Gentiles. Forget about, forget about all, just forget. I say forget. Block out of your mind. If you're going to a Baptist church or Church Christ or church or any other denomination out there, I'm not throwing, but, but if you're coming and seeking the truth, people, and wherever you're at, out there, or if you've already left and you're just wandering around bumping in this and that, trying to come to listen to some of these people on the internet, or if you've gone, or, if you, or maybe moved back towards the Hebrew movement, or, or whatever, uh, gone from Sunday worship to Sabbath or feast keeping, block out or, or kind of get out of your mind all of that and pay very much attention to what Isaiah represents, a prophet to Israel under the Old Covenant, to Israel, and what is he saying, or what is he prophesying, and, and, and paying very close attention to the words. Now, so when he's talking about we here, he's talking about Israel. So he's prophesying to Israel. And, of course, they kill Isaiah, saw him in half. They killed the prophets. Uh, but the thing, what he's saying, so I want to I want to break this down here, uh, 2617. She cries out, that's, that's a picture of Mary. Now when you go to Luke, uh, the second chapter, she's crying out. Her cry is like, and all those others that were going to give birth right after she gave birth to Messiah. In that fashion, uh, it says right here, in that fashion, we come into being to your beloved. 
Now see, now what is this saying, people? It's saying so in what fashion means proceeds or follows. So when Mary gave birth, then the rest of them in that same fashion they gave birth to the beloved. Now, the thing about it is, beloved here in the context represents Christ. That represents Christ in the manger. When she was born and he was in the manger, then they, were, they come, into, uh, come into being because of Christ. Beloved there. Now, this, this is a very important word here, people. Again, am I? It's all the way through. Right here, it means come in existence. So, so what does what does Isaiah saying? That when Mary give birth and crying out, they also the rest of those firstborn uh, brethren of Christ, they also those mothers cried out and gave birth, and they come into existence. But what does the scripture say? They come into being thee to the beloved. That was, the, in other words, that's why Mary is fulfilling all this because when he was born, they were born. But they come into being for the beloved because they were the firstborn, first fruits of Israel that he would buy back once he grew up and went to the tree and died. Now, this is going to say that. Now, watch now. Because of the fear of you, O Lord, we in the womb conceived and travailed and birthed the breath of your deliverance. Now the breath of Ruach, that birthed, that's right here, is showing you that he breathed into them, not just Christ by the Holy Spirit, but right here, it's right here in the scripture, people. Go read these verses. And and, and uh, that we and he birthed by his breath the spirit. Your deliverance, the deliverance is four nine nine one. Now, people, this is so very important, right here, uh, of Israel's deliverance that he would save. Uh, right here, which you did upon the earth. We shall not fall, right here, but, uh, look at in the Greek here, but all the ones dwelling upon the earth shall fall. See, now what is that when he's talking about in the context? What is he, what is Isaiah's son in? They start to stay with Israel. All those on the earth is not talking about. It's talking about the earth there, in that land. And that's who's going to all those up there on that land except them. Uh, and there will you will see that there will be those uh, that believe this, of course, Pentecost. But the biggest part, Israel or Judah was blinded to it, and they fell when God destroyed them. And He'll talk about that here, the destruction. Uh, the impious ones will be destroyed as you go right on through here. He lays all this prophecy out, exactly what Christ come, what was fulfilled, and in 70 A.D., God destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. So, so right here, now, uh, right here he said, now watch what he says in 2.19. The dead here, the dead, that's Necros, the dead right here, shall rise up. Now the dead is now the dead in the definite article cap. The dead, who is he? To, okay, when Christ died on the tree, he was dead. They put him in a tomb. But all those graves that broke open, they were dead. So the it says the dead shall rise up. That's in the plural here. Now look what he says. The dead shall rise up. That's resurrect there. And then he goes to the next verse. Now notice here. The ones in the tombs, that's the same Greek word when you go to uh, Matthew 27, 52, people. The ones in the tombs, right here, uh, 
the ones in these sepulchers or tombs shall be raised. Right here in the Greek. There it is. Gero. It's even the same Greek word as used in Matthew. It's a Gero 1453 people. I mean, we have the prophets prophesied. This should be for those that understand this, make sure you write this scripture down. For those that are doubting any of this that we're teaching, here is the prophet Isaiah prophesying exactly what was fulfilled, the mystery, which they killed the prophets, and it was given the mystery, to, of course, to Christ to come and fulfill the prophets, the law and the prophets, the law and the prophets here, and, and they, uh, and then, Christ chose the apostles, which the foundation of the mystery, heavenly Jerusalem, they would be the foundation. The twelve apostles are the foundation of the heavenly Jerusalem uh, to preach this mystery, people. So right here we have this, and look what it says. Now look what it says right here. And coming back to the ones in the earth and glad shall be. Right there, rejoicing the one now the ones in the earth for the dew uh yes, for the dew was a cure to them by you. I mean in the Messiah that resurrected when they resurrected, he resurrected first. But see that the, the cure here, people, is healing. Uh, you know, this, you know, by his stripes, see, all right, but notice right, right here. So the cure to them is, but the land of the impious, right here, who, the land of the impious was, was uh, who Christ said, your father's the devil. That was those that were in charge over Judea and the bad priests that were in the temple. That's the impious ones, impious here in the Greek. Uh, means ungodly man, wicked. Uh, so, and they denied all this. They covered this up. But what I want you to see, see when it's talking about cure, healing. But see, the by his stripes, we were healed. That's not talking about Gentiles, people, yet. That's talking about Israel. You've got to understand, this has all been taken out of context. By his stripes, they were healed when he, he was beaten and stricken for their trip. But you've got to understand, it is talking about Israel. The Gentiles, if that gospel is this, is, this is under the old covenant, the prophecies to be fulfilled. When Christ died on the tree, that was under the old covenant to fulfill to start the renewed covenant or the new creation with Israel. But he had to go away to send the Holy Spirit to bring nations in, the outside nations, people. you got to understand that. If you don't, you're going to stay confused. But I'm showing you right here what this healing is about, the resurrection of those slaughtered, Brethren of Christ that was killed because of his name, and at that appointed time, God sent the Son when he did the will of the Father, when he prayed three times, I know if I do this, not my will, but thy will will come into being on the earth. When I die on the tree, that's Genemai, I used the word Genemai. Just like it's in the Lord's Prayer, just like it's here. And Christ said the third prayer, I know if I do thy will, thy will will come into existence. Because when I die, the graves are breaking open right here. There it is. The ones and the sepulchers shall be raised. The ones in the graves that are open shall be resurrected. So Christ was praying that on the Mount of Olives after they had the supper, people. This is what this is all about, right? I mean, it's right, you know, we're, we're talking about Isaiah's prophesying that's already been fulfilled, and now we're waiting on the, the blessed hope for them to come back to their own borders. You, 
See, you got to wake up, people. If you're seeking his word, seeking his truth, come out and study these scriptures. And, the, and God's Spirit will reveal this. If you study these in reverence to him, he will reveal these scriptures to you and he will birth you with their spirit. We are birthed because they are our brethren people. I showed you all that in, in Revelation now in the Pentecost. You birth, that's that the Holy Spirit births you with them. They are the first fruits of Israel, the firstborn first fruits. That's Genesis 1. Beginning is Rashid. That means first rank in order first fruits. What do you think is coming to be in 4,000 years later? He's declared the end to the beginning. From ancient things hadn't been done yet, and he said his counsel will stand, he'll do all his pleasure. That comes from Isaiah. What do you think it, he's prophesying, and what do you think coming to, uh, when Christ come and went to the tree and died 4,000 years from beginning, the very first word of Genesis was that word beginning is come into being. He fulfilled that 4,000 years later, people. <laughs> That's how unbelievable this is. I, uh, go look what the Hebrew definition of or the Greek definition of beginning is. Rashi, first rank and order, first fruits. See, uh, through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Christ. It's amazing, people, but I mean, I'm giving you all this. You need to study it. Look here. So, a cure to them, that's the ones that the ones that seen that and the ones that believed. That healed them of that. What do you think the great crash and the mourning of Rachel and the great slaughter, that was the, the, the great tribulation in the first century started by the slaughter of those first fruits. But 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 when they was raised and their own their women seen their the resurrection of their dead, there was great rejoicing. Uh, John uh, in Third John, Second John, Third John. There I showed you. He said, "I rejoice greatly because I seen the brethren come. He seen the graves break open. He seen them after they were resurrected." So right here, I'm talking about the John the Beloved, not John the Baptist, John the Beloved. But the land of the impious shall fall. Now notice, people, right here. Proceed, O my people, enter into your chambers, lock your door, be concealed a little, as much as this, as much as that, until whenever the anger or the wrath of the Lord should go by. For behold, the Lord brings anger from the holy place upon the ones dwelling upon the earth. And notice right here, people. And the earth shall uncover her blood and shall not be covered up the ones being done away with anymore. Her blood is taught. Now, now this is all Christ taught. Every bit of this, people. Because what, what Isaiah is finishing up, finishing up with, that <clears throat> all those dwelling on the earth there in Jerusalem will be destroyed. That, and that's when he sent the Roman soldiers in, the legions, and they surround Jerusalem as a three and a half year siege, and they destroyed uh, Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. And, then the, and the ones that Christ said that were believed and were healed not healed, he healed a lot, but we're talking about the healing of Israel, the consolation of the resurrection of them, which, which uh, Simeon's going to tell Mary here just, just in a second. Uh, you got to understand Christ is prophesying all the way through to destruction in 70 AD. See, that's what he's talking about. And, and Christ, he was, and Isaiah said, they won't no more be covered up because all the blood all the way back to Abel when Christ prophesied to the to the progenitors of uh, Judah, he said, this generation right here, the blood all the way back, all the prophets, the blood all the way back to Abel be required your hands right here. And in 70 AD, he, he brought all that judgment on there. And that's exactly what Isaiah is prophesying here. 
Rather, you read in Hebrew or the Greek. See? So, see, that now this is what we just went through Revelation 4. The death, the pale horse. The pale horse come in and, and, and destroyed uh, uh, and destroyed those first fruits, but Christ raised them. And then as you go through, uh, as I went through, it, it also gives you how much longer will this not be avenged? You know, them crying out under the altar, see? Uh, and, and, of course, it, it, it was fully avenged when he destroyed Jerusalem and all those, uh, the temple and everything, and, she, and they were scattered, and they're still scattered. Now they're back in the land as far as the land, but there again, that's a prophecy of Edom. All right, now, so right here. Now, understanding that, hopefully this helps. Okay, so now, so, but I wanted you to see the main, the tie-in here is this right here to give birth, see? To give birth right here, this is Isaiah prophesying what actually Luke 2 is about, see? Because when she gave birth, they come in, all these come into band right here, come into band for the beloved. You see, not well, only Christ, but it was his first fruits of, of, of Israel, the firstborn. They were his brethren. You see, now, and right here, I want you to remember, this was the deliverance of Israel right here. Same deliverance, 4991. Rescue. Now, for us, first fruits of the Spirit. Uh, Paul uses the same word deliverance in Ephesians, write this down, Ephesians 1.13. When Paul says, when you first hear Christ or the gospel, and, and when you hear that, he says, and then that, that is the truth, um, the word, the truth, and the gospel of your salvation, same word right here, deliverance. See, and, and we become the first fruits of the Spirit that believe this. And that's why God bursts us with His Spirit. Rather, really, it don't make it, it has nothing to do now with the genealogy. It's a spiritual seed. See, it don't have anything to do with coming from what tribe over there. See, it has to do with the spiritual seed. See, while we're yet dead, He quickened us together with Christ. See, that uh, through grace you are saved, and that's God graced Abraham. And that grace, and that's his great love for us, how he loved us. His great love was redeeming them. Sending the Holy Spirit to love us, to birth us with this good news, this promise, uh, this mystery. And you believe, and then the Spirit teaches us uh, that we separate uh, come out of that because we're part of the one new man, the one new creation that's that's going to be when they come back to set up the kingdom. But this gospel has to be preached for two days, two thousand years before the end comes, and we have to endure everything that's thrown at us or whatever doctrines and what Christ said, Paul said, and Peter said that they the heresies would come in and they would deny the husband Christ that purchased these right here, the ones that come out of their tombs. See, they're your brethren if you believe, and see, you've been sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. See, that's the promise, the good message, the divine message God gave to Abraham. But God fulfilled it, see. Now, when you hear it and believe it, you're sealed with that promise. You've been sealed. And see, when that sealing of that promise is them, Say you've entered into their kingdom, into their household, into their commonwealth, and now you are part of the kingdom. But we've got to preach that. We got to walk in that. We, you know, we've got to uh, stand in that and not be drawn away. See, so very, very important to see that. All right, so let's go back to Luke two real quick, and and we'll we'll see here in Luke two. I think I can get to yeah, here we are. Okay, so understanding that, there's this word in 2.6, same thing that uh, Isaiah, and, and this is being fulfilled, what Isaiah just prophesied is being fulfilled on the birth. Now, they hadn't come out of their tombs yet. We, you know, that Isaiah also uh, uh, prophesied that, but that will happen. Uh, when Christ goes to the tree and die. But this is the birth of 
of, of, of Christ and, and his uh, brethren there, uh, Rachel's children. Okay, and that fulfilled Jeremiah's prophecy. It fulfills Isaiah's prophecy, see. So now, and she shall uh, give to the son the firstborn, and, and he will be swaddled, or, or, or she swaddled him and laid him, wrapped him, and laid him in a stable because there was no room for them in the end. No, we went through that. So let's come on down here, and I'm just going to go, go ahead and read, uh, and we'll get to Simeon here. So a lot of this we've already taught, but uh, there's a couple things I need to, uh, that's very, very paramount is for when Simeon uh, come in the temple with the Holy Spirit, being full of the Spirit. And the angel said to him, Fear not, for behold, bring you good tidings of great joy, and there shall be to all people. It will start with the Jews and then go to the nations. So the thing about it is, people, you should understand what the good tidings of great joy is about now. Say, for for you, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this will be the miracle unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. See, now he's ta this is all being talking to the uh, uh, shepherds here. And of course it's to us, but it's, it's, uh, the, sh the, the, the shepherds were being told this. And suddenly there come into band with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. Right here. And saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward man. Or in man is actually the word there in man. Uh, goodwill in men. That should be in. I'll see if it, uh, some of the translators use that's E-N in the Greek, and it means right here, the, the word means a fixed position in place or time or state. See, and that's, of course, when you're born again. But let's see, the, a lot of times the American Standard has a pretty good uh, 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 No, it says glory to the ice on earth and peace in and peace among men in whom he is well pleased. Okay, so in whom. But the, the Greek translation here uh, is right here. It's uh, on uh, the, the word here being earth. Well, uh, yeah, the earth. And it says peace right here. Peace in, or that's the covenant, really, the peace covenant. Peace in man, uh, in kindness here, or goodwill. So the covenant being in man, uh, and so that's uh, that's what it, and the covenant sent us once you confess Christ. And confess means in covenant with. Homo lego, two words, means in covenant. All right, so glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward or in man. And he come into man here as the angels were gone away apart from them into heaven. Uh, the shepherds said one to another, says to the shepherds, let us now even go or go to Bethlehem and see this thing, see this rhema, see the, the, the calling this thing, the rhema, and that is the rhema word. He is the word made flesh, but the, word, the, the Greek word here is rhema. Let us see this rhema, which is come to come into man, which the Lord has made, which those, the angels there had made known unto them by giving them this vision and what, why, why, he had, why Christ would be born. It was because of the vision. And now they're going to go down. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now notice, people. And when then they had seen it, they made known, or in the this word abroad, but it, the word means it means it's touching or with respect to. So when they had seen it, now when they had seen what it was got a word, and italics is it. Uh, see, that's talking about Christ or the Rama. When they had seen that, the word or Christ, 
they made known as touching the sand which was told them concerning this child. What was what what is it? It was it was a picture of the heavenly of the host. There was a picture of the first fruits that were being born out there in the wilderness. That's what we went over that. And so in two seventeen, uh, right here you see right. I've got it in in yellow right here. Right here is saying the see when he said as in touching the rhema or the English said. Uh, when they seen or it talking about Christ, but there the word Rama is here. That she is Christ. Uh, the Rama is said the preaching or saying what the angels had told them, and they were telling Mary and Joseph, and the angels were saying about it. That's why it's in the uh, Aris Passage Participle G S N singular. That's the same as Rama. That's the GSN. So the context is back to him or it, uh, it, and see by him, but the preaching of it or that uh, or Christ is them. There it is, daily plural masculine people. It's about them. So it's everything. He's first born of them, uh, uh, and they come into being. So what, what the angels were showing. This would be the redemption of the salvation of Israel, which which Isaiah is talking about. So the, the shepherds do this. Now notice. Uh, so uh, here's we got the daily as touching uh, the child, and that's talk, and that's also G singular neuter going back to Rama. All they have to fit. That's the child. Rama is the child. In the Greek is the G, G, uh, genitive singular neuter, genitive singular neuter. And it's, when it's talking about the one, that's also him, uh, genitive singular neuter. So this is amazing. But the thing you've got to see, they were coming. Once what was revealed to them by the angels, they were going down to see Christ, the one that the, the angels were talking about that was going to bring about the first fruits of Israel, which they were being birthed. And then uh, they were going to tell Mary and Joseph. And so right here, and all, now notice what in the context of Mary and Joseph, and all that they had heard wondered as touching those things were told them by the shepherds, the ones that were tending the flock people. It's how amazing this is. Now, when you go back to the Greek here in the 2.18, uh, you see that uh, uh, you have this, the, that was heard. In other words, they were telling Mary and them everything that the angels and the vision that they had got while they were tending the sheep, they had come down to tell Mary and Joseph. Now look what Mary said. And... <clears throat> By Mary, and it said, but Mary, not didn't say anything about Joseph here, because Joseph wasn't going to be alive when the resurrection took place. He was, he'd already died. Okay, but Mary kept all these things and pondered in her heart. You see? So, so the word kept here means, right here, it means she kept closely together. To conserve from ruin, mentally to remember, to obey, keep, observe. See, she kept everything that they were telling her. She kept them in her heart and pondered in her heart. And the shepherds returned, people, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. It was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished, for the circumcised of the child, his name was called Yeshua, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in her womb. That means Jesus, or uh, God saves, Yeshua, God's salvation. <clears throat> Jesus presented at the temple. Okay, people. Now, I've talked to you about this, but notice this. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the master there, 
the breach there. Now, now, I want to show you right here. And when the days of her purification, 2512, the cleansing of purification, according to the law of Moses, and that was 33 days. When you go to the Greek here, people, take a look now. So uh, stay, stay online here. Now you notice in the Greek, and of course I've talked to you about was finished, and that's in the API third plural. The days here that were finished, 33 days, it says, uh, the purification here. Now the purification is that being Christ, but that's in the genitive singular masculine. You know, in other words, it's time to go, uh, there's 33 days, and now they're going to present him to uh, the priest here for the uh, off of the two turtle doves. That was a part of the law, under the law there. But notice, now what, what does this mean here? So we got the purification, that's in the genitive singular masculine, that's, that's Jesus, 33 days old. And then, then now we got, right here, then we've got autos, the purification of him. Now, where'd this come from? See, 846. That's a pronoun, and that's, that's, but now this is in the genitive case. Christ is in the genitive. But Christ is singular. But guess what, people? This is in the genitive plural masculine. See, in other words, what is it? What's the Greek telling us? Same thing. It's the same thing up there. When he was born, they were born. Now, now, according to the law, this had to fulfill that, and Christ come to fulfill the law and the prophets. Uh, so, by this purification or this uh, uh, these thirty three days when they when, when Christ come in and those two turtle doves was offered under the law, but see, it was for Christ and them. It fulfilled them too. Right there, it is. So you would only see that in the Greek. You're not going to. You're not going to see that in the English. You see. So, but anyhow. So, so you go back and look at the English, unless you know that all, all you know, you know it now. So, but and well, the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses. But see, her purification was in the singular masculine, but it was also in the genitive plural masculine. It was 33 days because, see, it covered them also, just like him being born. Uh, you know, when he was born, they were born. So when he brought, when she brought him in, when Mary brought him in, that covered them also. See, she is, like I said before, you got to, you got to see, only the Spirit can reveal this, you got to see she represents heavenly Jerusalem. She represents the mother of us all. She represents, uh, by being the firstborn, uh, Christ come through her, she represented those other women that all those firstborn, his brethren, were born. Now, when she come into the temple of purification for him, it also took care of them. That's And the Greek shows that, people. That's how awesome this is. Okay, so... Now, of course, that also covers us people, first fruits of the Spirit, because uh, we're not under the law, but uh, uh, we uh, we have been we've been grafted into them, the one new man, the new creation. So, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Now, here I've talked about this many hours. That every male that opened the word "open" means firstborn, right here, and it's in the context. It means thoroughly, literally, as a firstborn. So Christ was firstborn, and all those others were firstborn. But Christ was the firstborn of them. He's first rank in order of the creation, all creation. They're next, and then now we are the first fruits of the Spirit uh, that believe, and that's why we've entered into their kingdom and into their household. People, amazing. So every male that opened as firstborn of the womb shall be called. This is how God called them. Remember. Now, when you go to, uh, and I'll do a study on this later. I've talked to you about Romans 8, 29. Well, 8, 30 is still about them. To whom he called, how did he call them? Through the matrix, through the virgin women's womb. That's how they were called right here. That's the same. Now, how are we called? You see, 
If you know how they're called, but how are we called? We're called by the good news of the gospel when we hear this. See, see, we're called by when we hear the gospel, the truth, the gospel of our salvation. You believe now when you believe, you've been sealed with them. You've been sealed by the promise, kept, that was kept 2,000 years ago, see, which is them. You've been sealed by that, people. Just like uh, their sealing of them, they were sealed by the Holy Spirit, uh, by God in their foreheads when the graves broke open. When we hear the gospel, the truth, and believe, we're sealed by them. See, that God seals us, that spirit. That's why you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're the temple of God. You've been sealed. And God writes that, that covenant. He writes this on our mind, and it's wrote up on fleshly tables of the heart. He, it enters our mind because it's the spirit. Just like it entered them at Pentecost. It fell in their heads, entering in their minds, same it entered in, and that's why uh, we eat and drink of truth spiritually. We have to have the understanding, see? Uh, so the understanding is the mind puts it together. The wise will understand or perceive. The spirit brings us to that knowledge. Okay, so every male that opens the womb shall be called, and that's why now predestination 8.30 to whom he called, that's him, he justified, he justified when Christ died for him, poured out the blood that justified them, and he glorified them. When he raised Christ from the dead, they were raised after his resurrection to glory. So they were called, they were justified and glorified. That's already been done, people. It's all been completed. Now, here's, here's, when we hear this message, the gospel, and believe, we're sealed with the promise. And see, that's the down payment of the promise. So we were called by how? The gospel. And how we're justified? By believing, coming out, and walking in those good works, and doing those works of Christ, first works, first love, that were filled at the cross. And, and now, see, and we fully expect and fully believe to be glorified, and that's our blessed hope. When they come, then we'll be changed and be glorified. You see? So we've been called by the gospel, and we believe, and we've been sealed by the Holy Spirit promise. We've been sealed by that good message. And so that justifies us because Christ died on the tree, and that blood also washes us from our sin, and now we're waiting on our glorification. See, but they've been called justified and glorified. That happened 2,000 years ago. That's why that, that preaching or predestination about being about us is just like the rest of it. They've left the, the uh, elect out. They've left his church, his body out. And they've substituted making us the body, the church, the bride, which we are not. Now, you know, if that offends you, but how could that offend you when God did not choose Gentiles, he chose a people, not a particular people. He told, he chose them uh, and called them his firstborn, Israel, people. So, you know, number one is, uh, yes, he's creating us through the Spirit as his sons and daughters, or first fruits of the Spirit, we're being created. Spirit has been creating us by birthing us and bringing us into this one new man, his new creation. And that's his great love for us. How glorious. I mean, we all, when you come to this, there's great peace to understand this. And this is truly your salvation here. So you should be uh, shouting it from the rooftops. Okay, so right here, uh, so this is uh, how they were called. Uh, we're staying in the context of what happened uh, when they were young, you know, born, you know. So let's stay right here where this is at now. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said to the law of the Lord, a pair of two double doves or two young pigeons. And that was, that's what happened there. Just follow it. It's just, when you come to see this, it's just right everything is just, it's just, 
everything is in order and everything confirms the next verse. In other words, everything is confirming. There's nothing to be lost here from where we started. If you stay in, it's still talk, everything is in that same order. And behold, there was a man, Jerusalem. This is the Mount Man Simeon. And the same man was just about waiting for the consolation that come be in Christ. And the Holy, one, Holy Ghost, and the Holy Spirit, was upon him. Now, the Holy Spirit had been given, but he was a devout man, just like the Spirit God would speak to the prophets. And so Simeon, uh, the Spirit was upon Simeon. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see or taste death before he had seen the Lord's Christ, uh, the Messiah here. And he came by the Spirit. Notice everything's in the Spirit here. That's why we have to be born of the Spirit to understand this. He was birthed of the Spirit because he's fixing to uh, bless the Messiah. He's going to talk to uh, and bless uh, Mary. It's about to, but he's going to reveal more now, people. Now notice. And he came by the Spirit in the temple. And when the parents brought in, Joseph brought in the child Jesus to make to do or to fulfill him after the custom of the law. Now notice, people, 228. Then he, Simeon, took up Christ here, uh, took up Christ in his arms and blessed him and said, Now, uh, let's look at let's look at something here in two twenty eight. Let's look in the Greek right here. Okay, so right here uh, we have we have you got and him that's Christ, and then we've got uh, to receive or to accept or take, and then we got. Altos again, now this is in the accusative singular neuter. See, now, why am I saying this here? Because when you go back to man-child, all the males are men, that's also in the accusative singular neuter. Now, the Greek is used it as very important. You've got two altos, people. Right here's the first one. This is representing Christ. See, right here. That's representing Jesus. But there's a hidden thing here. Right here. You've got this second here. Now, why is that hidden? But in, it's not hidden in the Greek. See? Because, uh, let me put that in yellow. So, so what I'm, at the same time, but, but you can make a note of this. When you go to Revelation 12 and 4, in this same picture here, it, it's, it's saying the man-child is in the accusative singular neuter. See, so you got Christ here, and then you got this other altos in the singular. But in Revelation uh, 12, 4, you got the man-child is Christ, and them as an accused of singer or neuter. So the Greek is used it here. So, so when he took a hold of Christ, but he is understanding people, he already knew all who, the prophecy of Isaiah. He knew the prophecy by the Spirit. He knew the prophecy of Jeremiah. He knew what this is all about, and I'll show you this right here. So this is how amazing this is. So when we come back to the English, uh, Let's go back to the English here and put my glasses on here. And he took them up in his arms. See, you got even in the Now, let's show you how this is uh, studying here. Let me just go to the King James here. And he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, See, now, you never, okay, he took, he, and he took he, him, up in his arms, okay. All right, now, that's the, that's the English, English translation there. But, but people, when you go to the, see, him right here is him, see. 
that in the English, we know that's Jesus, right? Okay. But the Greek text is showing something else besides him. So when you, there again, when you go to the Greek, him and autos, there's, uh, uh, there's him right there, singular masculine, and took a hold. But then who is this in the uh, a pronoun of being accused of singular neuter? You, know, you don't see that in the English language. I'm just showing you that. But this is him, and then Simeon knew in the spirit when he, when he took him up, he was also, and they are included. You can't separate even back before, but it's already showing it in the Greek is what I'm saying. Us is already uh, uh, revealing all these people. Uh, now, so notice here. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to the rhema. According to let me depart, because I've seen this right here. Now look what he said next. For my eyes, there's those eyes, have seen thy salvation of Israel. But see, not the salvation here, that means uh, defender, uh, salvation, the Christ. For my eyes, and of course that's the seeing eye. That's, that means uh, figuratively uh, a vision. For my eyes have seen thy salvation. Now notice here. Which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. And of course all people will be right. He's going to tell you who that is. Uh, which thou hast prepared before the face of it. And notice right here. A light to lighten the Gentile. That lighten means to the revelation of the mystery. That means to the unveiling. The manifestation to reveal. It's what Paul said, that the revelation of mystery is given to us uh, Gentiles, right here. That that light is going to come into existence, uh, the revealing to the Gentiles, the light. That's him and them, people. And the glory of thy people Israel, and the glory of the people Israel, the ones there that... Uh, that were waiting on this, uh, the women had seen their dead raised and those that believed and the ones that believed that were being persecuted that, that were in the way, that were following Christ and the ones that were added to the Lord, 3,000 and 5,000 after Pentecost uh, and they believed and a lot of them I witnessed the glory, the resurrection uh, of thy people, the glory of thy people, that means the resurrection. For thy kingdom is the power and the glory, people. Okay, notice here. And Joseph and his mother, or Mary, marveled. See, marveled at these things which were spoken uh, in respect to him, in respect to this Jesus. Just like they marveled when the shepherds came. See, uh, so this is 33... Uh, when Christ was born, and then eight days later, or eight days he was circumcised, now we're 33 days later. And so Simeon now is coming and telling Mary and Joseph these things. Now, uh, uh, there's, I need to, I want to go back here and right here in 228 before we go to the the next prophecy or what Simeon's going to say. Then Simeon took Christ up. And of course, that's where I showed you, you had two things. You had him and you had them, or in the accusative singular neuter, in his arms and blessed God and said, right here, Lord, now let thou servant depart now. Right here, people, is amazing, uh, which I read over it, but I'm going back to it. Do you see the word in verse 29, Lord? That is 1203 in the Greek, and that means husband. Notice here, people. That's how Simeon knew. 
It means, and that's why I use him and them, husband, absolutely Lord, master. Okay, right here he said, uh, Lord, now let us thou servant depart. He called, he blessed Christ, and he, but he called him Lord. He called just like David. He, uh, but Simeon called Christ, of course, his Lord. But understanding why this Greek word is used, because it has to do the husband of them, of all those firstborn after he was born, Rachel's children. Because uh, now, let me, let me show you something, people. When you do a right click here, I need to show you this so we follow this on through here. You, you find Lord ten times and use this way here. First time is where Simeon's used it. But let me, let's me let go to the book of Revelation, people. Well, let's go to Peter first. Right here. I've talked uh, 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 2 Peter 2 1. Right here. Uh, how many times have we talked about this? But there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately bring in damnable heresies, denying the Lord, there it is right there, the Lord that bought, that redeemed them. That's the ones that were being born here with Christ, Rachel's children, there it's going to kill. You see, right here, that's going, and Christ will buy them back and redeem them from the tree when he dies. And the blood of the water is poured out. Their graves break open. Three days, nights later, he gets up. They get up, and he uh, they ascend to heaven. And they've been there the whole time, uh, as you know, was the teaching. They are our brethren. They are our angels. They are the messengers to the ecclesia uh, here on earth. I will be done in heaven on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, now r right here, but I want you to see, Lord, Simeon uses the same. And Simeon knew that. He was born, they, he knew the prophecies. He'd come in full of the Spirit, and he knew, and he's even going to prophesy uh, him redeeming them, what Peter's talking about. Simeon's going to prophesy the redemption of them, which, which the heresies come in denied that. Okay, now the point you got to see, I want you to see in Luke 2.29. Now, now right here, look what we, we just went over this. You go back in your studies, and right here uh, uh, in Revelation 16, 10, 16, excuse me. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O husband, O Lord, holy and true, that's their brethren, Jesus Christ, their husband, uh, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Now see, this is them crying under uh, the altar, this is them that are have been slain. And they're crying out, see. But what what I want you to see is it's Lord right here. See, we've got so many witnesses to all this, but but we have to see the verses and study the words. In other words, I guess you could say connect uh, the treasures here, uh, because it's buried, it's hidden people. Uh, but now it's being revealed. So we've got all the scripture to prove this. And uh, this one word here, and this proves that Simeon knew who he was husband over. He knew his birth brought on their birth. He also is going to show you right here, uh, look how amazing, Simeon don't stop here. And now he says, For my eyes now have seen thy salvation. The salvation, his eyes, uh, blessing, when he blessed them, he blessed them, and he he knew that that Christ would be the salvation of them and also of all of us that believe. Now, right here, that thou was prepared before the face of all people, like to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Okay, now look. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things that were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother. Behold, this child in context is set, and that word set means uh, to lie outstretched, appointed, laid up, made set, lie, uh, lie. And of course, that, that lie, 
lay or lie, he's being laid in a manger. See, he was laid in this miracle. He would be lie. He would be laid in the manger. But when Herod got wind of this, in Matthew the second chapter, Herod said, "Hey, I need to know where he's at, so I can go." No, he needed to know where he's at, so he could go kill him. He did not want any competition with his uh, jurisdiction and and his power. The same thing with the Sanhedrin. They did not want to, uh, their, them, they lose their power, people. Now, and that's why, so Christ was laid in a manger when he was born, they were born, and now look what Simeon is saying, for the fall, that's the crash, that's the great crash, that's the, that to fulfill Jeremiah's prophecy, Rachel weeping for her children. But, but notice the prophecy, don't weep. For your uh, rewards, your works are going to be rewarded, he said. Uh, God told Jeremiah to prophesy that. Now notice what Simeon's saying. So here's going to be the fall. Now this fall that's going to take place, people. This fall that's going to take place is fixing to happen just, just not long after this. You see, because Herod's going to put out a degree to kill all. Jesus 33 days old here. So he's going to put out a degree to kill later on when the wise man come and leave and don't come back. Herod figures up, kill all the two-year-old males and under to get to Jesus. You see, now look what uh, Simeon says next here. The fall, then the, after the fall, there will be this rising again as uh, Anastasius. It means the resurrection of Polis, many in Israel. Well, what is this about? This is to fill Jeremiah's prophecy, and they will all return to their own borders. Uh, 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 they return again from the land of the enemy, the enemy killed them, and when, when Christ died, they were still in the land of the enemy. And then when Christ got up, they got up in the land of the enemy. And, of course, then they were uh, ascended to heaven with Christ. And then Christ comes back uh, to teach the kingdom to the apostles. And then 40 days later, the Omer count, he goes back to send the Holy Spirit to reveal this. Okay, so in Israel, so right here. And... For a miracle, and see, this this come into being at this time, is what Simeon's saying, that word in, that means in a place of time, uh, this resurrection of the future Passover, of course, Christ has got to grow up, and they got to, they're going to be slaughtered, and Christ has got to grow up, and then at that point in time, when he goes to the tree and die of Passover, then this resurrection will take place. Okay, this miracle then, but look what it said which shall be spoken against. Now, who's going to speak against it, people? Who is going to speak against what Simeon is prophesying here to Mary when Christ is 33 days old? Well, when you do it, it's found nine times, but the word uh, spoken against means dispute, refuse, contradict, or deny. Up in their mind, so they has got the word deny. Many will deny the husband and bought found. They'll deny it. They'll speak. That's a gainsayer. They call that, you've heard of that, in a gainsayer. Okay, now, look. Let's look, look what Paul runs into here. Look, look in uh, 1345. Write this down, people. Please, uh, for all those that are... Uh, or studying, right? Acts 13, 45. Look what it said. Look what said, uh, is being said here. This is Paul now. Paul's already started preaching. So, but when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy, and they spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. See? Well, if you if you understand, uh, when you go back, 
when you go when you go back to uh, Acts thirteen forty five and you read that Paul is open. He's in on the Sabbath. He's opened up. He stands up on the Sabbath day and he opens up the law of the prophet, the Old Testament. And, and uh, that's what they're reading about the law of the prophet. Then Paul stands up and tells them it's been fulfilled. And, uh, and the Gentiles are begging to hear about it on the next Sabbath. But see, who is contradicting? Simeon said, this, look, what's going to be contradicted and covered up? The resurrection of many in Israel. And then and as he said, that time, that miracle that's going to happen, the resurrection of Christ and them, he said, they're going to cover up. It's going to be contradicted. See, now, now the thing about it is, people, to understand that, <laughs> we've all been gainsayers that doesn't understand this. Now we're not. We've been converted, we believe. But, they, but they don't, the thing about the, the denominational and those that, these, and, and these heresies, they think they're preaching the truth. But according to the word, they are gainsayers. But see, that's why this message, the books are being opened, and this mystery is going to be revealed, especially when the witnesses stand up. The whole world's going to hear it before God brings the judgment. Because he never does anything until he has his two or more witnesses to confirm his debar or his logos. So this is what's happening, people. So uh, if, if you're coming in to seeing this, we got new people coming in. No matter what you've been involved in, no matter where you've been, we've all been in different uh, sects out there, different uh, teachings about Christ. But now you're coming to the knowledge of the truth and believe. Then once you believe, let go of that. Do the best you can. Do not let that baggage keep hanging on you because the more it does, even though you believe this message, uh, do, you know, uh, God does not look back there. Once you're converted, being converted to the truth, people, once you're converted, then uh, walk in that truth and then uh, help other people with it, people. Show them the scripture, the ones that want to learn or want to see. Uh, give them the scripture so the Father can quicken them with Christ, see. So, very, very important. So, I know there's people, it's hard once we've been tied up for something or in some kind of teaching for 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, but when you come to this truth and, they're, they're, and you know you haven't been taught that, then praise God, believe, and he'll seal you this promise. And you've been sealed by the Spirit. And and now, study the Scripture and teach those that are teachable. Okay, so right here, as we close here, we're going to see right here, yeah, and then he comes back to Mary. Yea, to Mary, a sword, that sword shall pierce through thy own soul also that the thoughts of the many hearts may be, there it is, revealed. Many hearts is talking about the slaughter of them. And she understood. Now, when she was standing at the cross, when that sword pierced her own soul, when that's talking about when they pierced her son, her, her firstborn, Christ, then those graves broke open, people. Uh, when that blood and water poured out, he died and the water and the blood poured out. Earthquake and temple rent, the graves opened. And the thoughts there, ek, out of many hearts, was open to her. Right there, in Revelation of the six, 601, that means the cover was taken off. It was revealed to her. Right here, it's telling you, Mary pondered on these things, people. And she kept them in her heart and she protected them. But Simeon is telling Mary, when your soul is pierced through, when your son is pierced at the cross, those many hearts you've been pondered on, it's going to be revealed because how is it going to be revealed? Because his graves are going to break open and when your son gets up, they're going to get up. That's how unbelievable this is, people, what's being said here. Okay, now, even the prophecy, Hannah, a prophecy is the daughter of Panel, a tribe of Asher. She was of great age. 
and had lived uh, with a husband 70 years from her virginity, it said, and she was a widow of about fourscore and four years. Now that's fourscore and four is uh, 84 years, uh, 70 years, uh, and, and she was a very great age, but notice, which departed not apart from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. Right here. And she coming, uh, she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for the redemption in Jerusalem. See, the redemption uh, that in Jerusalem is Christ. And she understood the same thing the Simeon understood, people. This is the prophet Hannah, or from uh, Panel. Uh, this is amazing, amazing, uh, revealing to us here, people. Hopefully, this has helped. Now, we'll close as we close this out. Uh, we'll go back to Revelation seven in our next video, Lord willing, and we'll continue there through seven and eight. Hopefully. And then there's so many other things that I want to get to. Lord willing, we'll get to those as we start coming into the end of this year to get ready to start uh, the new year coming next spring, which will be here before we know it. And there's so much to when we do Passover to reveal everything that happened there and how glorious that is when you fellowship with those at Passover in the mystery of the gospel or the mystery of Christ. So hopefully you're coming to see these things and uh, I don't know, in a few days, hopefully we'll go back with another video. So may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may that spirit witness your spirit to be traded to the scripture of one another. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and soon coming with them. Amen.